What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, April 28th, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the Future Class of Video Games, a.k.a. the OK Beast Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Greg, for a split second, as you were introing, you held up a Rubik's Cube and, like, twisted it real fast. Yeah. And I was going to say, like, if you solved that Rubik's Cube in half a second, I would have been very impressed. I, well, here's what I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen. If you're driving your FedEx truck, your UPS truck, your van full of nuns right now, and you're one of those people that can sit there with one hand and just chick, 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 and do a Rubik's Cube, you are one of the most impressive fucking people on the planet. Oh, I no, wish sure. I could do that. And I don't wish I could do it enough where I'd practice to do it and learn how to do it, bless, but I wish I could do that. Do you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? Fuck, you have to no. know. Fuck no to you. Why do you have a Rubik's Cube? Yesterday I got a I got a Puzzle Quest 2 or Puzzle Quest 3 swag box with some pillows and mm. uh 20-sided dice and then a, a Rubik's Cube with all the Puzzle Quest gems on it. Mm. You should learn. Hey, I, you didn't ask the question. Do you know how to do it? I asked you, do you know how to do it? No, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. No. I had a friend growing my best friend growing up actually could do the Rubik's Cube in about I want to say like two minutes, maybe two to three minutes, and we all thought it was the most impressive thing because yeah. it was the most impressive thing. Um, and I, I tried to learn, like I tried to do the thing where I sat down. Of course, there's like a bunch of YouTube videos to sure. like tell you all the strategies uh, and all the solutions to solve a Rubik's cube. But like, I just didn't have the patience for it. I, after a while, I was just like, why am I doing this? Like, the only reason I'm going to do this is to impress other people. And how often do I feel like impressing other people with the fact that I can solve a Rubik's cube? And see, that's the thing where I feel like it would have been such a dope thing to learn as a child to then just break out. Nick Scarpino, you know, for literally three days during the start of the pandemic, bought a keyboard and was going to learn how to play piano so that when pandemic was over, he could just sit down at a piano one day and wow us or whatever. Think of how amazing that would be that if you were just that person and you, you're 30 some years old, you know, you show up to some party to meet some people and you see a Rubik's Cube over on the shelf. And you're like, oh man, that's funny. You just go bah, 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 and, it and put it down. They're like, holy shit. You seem so well-rounded, but at some point you must have been a huge fucking loser. <laughs> and you're like, yes, nerd. I was. I sat in my room and this is what I did. Like I read, I read comics, played games, drew my own comic books, right? That's what I was doing. Some other kid had one Rubik's Cube, no power. You know what I mean? And they were just like, I'm going to master this thing. I mean, you're it. not wrong. Like the friend, my my best friend who did know how to solve the Rubik's Cube in about two minutes, she was homeschooled. And so like, See? Oh, that all, it that'll lines up. It. That'll do that'll, it. That'll do it right there. Greg, I mean, that's have... got to that's got to bounce back too, right? If it's homeschooling, right? Like at some point, like first off, we all know school is a bunch of bullshit, right? Kids bullshit, don't even bother going. You know what I mean? But if you do go, that. you under, you definitely leave the school day, and you're like, I feel like I could have gotten that all done in an hour and a half if I re if somebody really tried. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's what parents do. They're like, listen, this is it. That's this. Add that. Do that. You're done. And then yeah, it is. All right, here's a Rubik's cube. Mom's gonna go smoke a cigarette and have a shot of whiskey in the backyard. You know. <laughs> No, that lines up. I, I think that's that's about how that, that went. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but do you did you have like a talent growing up that you would just bust out and show friends out of nowhere and they'd go, "Oh my God, Greg is is the coolest person," or they'd say, "Greg's a fucking nerd." Uh no. I mean, I drew I drew a lot, so I was you know a good cartoonist, good car comic. Can you still artist. draw? Um, you've seen it. I mean, no. I, it's one of those. You know, I, I don't. I haven't drawn professionally. I saw since I saw college. your Mewtwo. Your Mewtwo was incredible. Thank you. Thank your you. Your BD Kong you. is really great. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't, okay. We didn't say your I was. Superman like, logos are pretty dope. Superman logos are great. Come on. Yeah. Now. You can't. You can't. Those are spot that, on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Now, what about you? I'll, you break dance, right? So that's something you could do. That was my thing. That that's the thing that sucks is that now I don't have that anymore because like I can't really dance anymore. I've, I've lost it. I've become rusty. I've become I've become sure. old. And also in the pandemic, I've just stopped dancing for the last few years, and so I don't sure. have that anymore. And he's never um, gonna dance again. But back in the day, like that was the thing, right? Where like I'd go, I'd go somewhere, and like they put on some music, and I'd be like, "All right, guys, watch this real quick," and I'd bust a move, and everybody go, "Oh!" And I'm like, "Yeah, this is way cooler than solving a Rubik's cube." But now oh, I don't have anything. Fuck yeah, it is. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, I guess now I don't have anything. I guess I, you know, I, I'm I'm loud. So if you don't expect that, mm -hmm. I can be loud, and then I can eat, you know, the chicken wing with you know the one bite maneuver. That's pretty much all I got right now for talents that I could bust out. And neither a moment's of notice. those things are talents. They're just gross. <laughs> just things people you know? do. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, what would you say your talent is? What talent were you busting out as a little kid? As I don't know. I mean, we were all put in like piano class, and like if necessary, I can judo flip you pretty good. You know, through the oh, piano. Shit. Oh yeah, onto the piano, I guess. Depending on the. Kevin, what are you piano. eating right now? Um, tortilla with an egg and some sausage in it. Oh. Sounds, sounds really great. Good. That sounds great. It's pretty good. Guys. Uh, it's pretty good. Well, there's a lot of game news, and we'll get to it in a second. But I also want to do Kevin is I want you to know that I stopped by Lucho's yesterday. 
for like the oh, or two days ago, I guess, for the first know. time uh, during the pandemic. Lucho flipped the fuck out to see me. It was great. I love that guy so much. And he, yeah, of course, had nothing but nice things to say. Wait, there is a there is a Lucho at Lucho's. Yeah, he's yeah. Lucho. It's his restaurant. He's, he's got amazing. another one up oh. north now in in uh, in uh, San Rafael. He was talking about that. Huh. I've been to Lucho's maybe exactly I want to say six or seven times sure. it's always been the same very nice lady that's there She's yeah that's wonderful. his wife that's his wife usually yeah. wow i did not know that i did not yeah, know that lucho busy. was actually like he was there yeah yeah, oh, yeah, really yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, don't worry about I it ladies and gentlemen if you don't know who lucho is of course you can go watch the first kind of funny game showcase where we went around san francisco we shot in front of luchos and it, i was over there for a doctor's appointment and the receptionist came in it was after i'd already done the doctors or whatever and so she came in to pick up her lunch and i paid for it and she was like, oh, my God, that's so nice. I'm like, Lucha's not going to let me pay for my coffee that I'm drinking. So this will just be my way to pay it forward. And then Lucha was like, you don't understand. He was one of my first customers ever. He, he put me in a YouTube video. She's like, a YouTube video? Like, he's famous. And I'm like, all right, Lucha, let's not go that far. He's like, what's your YouTube channel? I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. I don't need the doctor watching me over here yelling at Tim about a jacket or trying to figure out what my talent is. It turns out what being loud is it. But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about Xbox having an E3 slash non-E3 showcase. PlayStation cracking down on you, stacking subs. And Rogue Legacy 2 reviews rolling in. We'll cover all this and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week. What if I was just doing a Like, I wasn't even looking at it. Wouldn't that be awesome? You should do, do that. What? Like, I think you should it. secretly get good at it. Secretly learn how to solve Ruse Cube and just solve it over the course of the campaign. And that's that's back to it and that's the thing you know bless you of course before you worked it kind of funny kind of funny best friend you you watch and listen and stuff on ign imagine you know that i am just a fucking windbag of the same old fucking stories right you're sick of doing millions of shows with me because you hear the same fucking things all the time imagine if i had somehow kept this secret for 15 fucking years just for this moment where i'm doing the intro da, 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 and i'm like bam by the way solved even the, imagine if i was just, most, that would be a very greg miller thing to do like See, I would be, I'll be impressed, but I'll also say like, oh, that's Greg right there. Imagine if I was just, if I had schemed this better, Kevin. I was like, da 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 da. I went bam, and I had another cube right here, and I lifted it up. Solved. You know oh, what I mean? that wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be smart. Uh, now here's the thing. You all know. T all right, chat be cool. Chat be cool. Chat be cool. Everybody in chat be cool. We all know Tim will not listen to this episode. Neither will Nick. Neither will Andy. Andy might be listening, but so Andy be cool if you do this. Maybe I will order two Rubik's cubes, just plain ones. I will fuck them up, and then I will sit here. During a kind of funny podcast, and at some point, Kevin will go bam, and I'll pick up the other one. No, no, you right? need to order three, right? So okay. you have one that's mixed up, and you're playing with it. Then you put it down, the one that's already made, right? Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. you mix uh -huh. it up one more time, put it down, be like, I did it again. But what if I'm doing oh, that? Smart. So like, what if they see me doing this, and Andy's like, you can't do that. I'm like, all right, Andy, again, play, be cool, Andy, cool. Nobody tweet, nobody fuck this up for me. Nobody, all right, I'm doing this shit here, and then I'm just like, I, I'm just like mindlessly doing while we talk, and I just like, bam, I'm, like, I'm still doing it, right? Like, there's no way Nick's gonna be. First off, Nick's never looking at this. Not screen. paying attention. Yeah, exactly. He's over here fucking on Amazon yeah, and Instagram. He's, cute. he's gonna make fun of you, and suddenly I, it's gonna become the topic. But then it becomes how long can we let it go? Because if we don't tell, like we never give it up, you know what I mean? They but all they think I'm like really the cool. idea None of the two of it. having the three Rubik's cube. They're gonna be like, like do I it again. <laughs> you know? Like, like, no, I mean, I could. That's why, that's I why could. Oh no, I couldn't. You're right. You're right. That's why I have thing, three. Right? That's why you I have, have three. You have the one that's Thank fully you, scrambled. You, you have you have the middle one that has like two to three of the side solved. So there is like a level of progression that they can kind of see where they're. Brandy's like four. Right, because then I have one completed, one completed, one fucked up, and the oh, one I'm yes. testing. <laughs> yes. And that way I put it down. At some point, I picked up the the slide of fucked up one, did that. Then I put that down, and I'm like, I solved it, and I bring up the first one. And then when they do it again, I'm like, all right, fine. And I just do it with the one that I don't care about that I, is solved, right? And then I do the whole switcheroo again, and then bam. Fuck me. That's genius. I, I, Everybody, I don't fuck too. this up for me. I know how much you all like to fuck shit up. Don't fuck this up for me. All right. I, I I just love the idea of having the half solved one where like 30 minutes into the show, like you hold it up and like you're messing with it. And, and it, it, surely it's going to be Andy that notices it and goes, is is he solving it? Like, is he getting closer and closer to solving? But he won't say it. Right. He'll just think it to himself. <laughs> and then by the time you, yeah, you actually picked up the solved one, he's going to be like, oh, fuck, I noticed. I knew it. I knew it. It's going to be that's a fucking great bit. Greg, do you want me to order you? He says something? this gag sounds expensive, and that's why I will, of course, tell you to go to patreoncom slash kind of funny games. Of course, over on patreoncom slash kind of funny games. You, I don't know, twenty bucks probably, ten, uh, fifteen, twelve it's not bucks, expensive. I imagine, right? Uh, yeah. If you go to patreoncom slash kind of funny games, of course, you can be a part of kind of funny games daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. Uh, over on patreoncom slash kind of funny games, you could write in to be part of the show. You could get the show ad free. You could get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday. Today we are doing a shit list. I did my first ever shit list with tim i know that's a tim and blessing mm -hmm. bit 
But since uh, Tim's not here today and I'm doing this with you, Buster, we got a shit list ready to go that oh, has been yeah. submitted by the audience. So I'm very excited about that. Of course, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, and podcast services around the globe each and every weekday to, i gotta put it down to get a brand new, <laughs> new spanking episode of the show of course you'll get ads of course you didn't write in of course you don't get the post show but you're still supporting us and taking care of us and that means so much to us if you want to go that extra mile of course you can watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games over on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games you can of course be chatting with all the other chatters in there just like rog former is lanky dragoon is and brand mats are if you're watching live you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on the platforms I talked about before. And if you want to go the extra mile one more time, you can go on the Epic Game Store and use the creator code kind of funny. All one word. Every time you buy something, we would get some money. It'd be great. You don't play on PC, no big deal. Maybe you play Fortnite, Rocket League, and or Fall Guys on one of the many consoles you own. The creator code works there too. Kind of funny, all one word. Please support us. Uh, housekeeping for you. Remember to check out the Kind of Funny TikTok at Kind of Funny Games. There's an amazing episode of KF Court where we get to the bottom of the burnt orange jacket for Tim. It's a must-see, trust me. This is one of the, uh, first off, Roger and the TikTok team have been fucking killing it period full stop 100 this new one is so goddamn good of course i the burnt orange jacket conundrum is amazing on its own let alone then with the people's court theme and the plaintiffs and defendants and judge kevin you got to go over there in other news it's yam hashoah or holocaust remembrance day today we remember the approximately six million jews murdered by the holocaust or i'm um, in the holocaust by the nazi by nazi germany and its collaborators uh, of course you might say uh, of course this is something we have to remember uh, of course this is something to point out for our jewish friends but of course this is something to point out for everybody uh, the holocaust was a horrible horrible thing that affected everybody and uh, as the famous quote goes that i heard has been misattributed a million times the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing so of course it's always important to know your history so it doesn't repeat itself because it always seems in uh, 2022 the next nightmare scenario could be around the corner so of course a uh, holocaust remembrance day something to think about today and reflect on thank you to our patreon producers fargo brady prank skin anonymous today we're brought to you by brother printers lumen skin and razor but we'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the roper report time for some news five items on the roper report a baker's dozen jen are you over there She's over there, but she got headphones on. I got to throw this cube away. I can't. I will continue to spin it the entire time. I can't do it. I can't have it. I can't have it this close to me. I'm sorry. I can't do it. You got to right? learn how to solve it. Like, I, 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 I think the kind of funny podcast. Or like we just said, I buy a bunch and do it. Uh, over here, of course, uh, the nanobiologist says Rubik's Cubes are $7 on uh yeah uh, so that's not expensive 28 yeah. bucks for a for a bit that's easy i've spent also, way like, more than that on content i think so. gag aside right i think your heart wants to solve the rubik's cube yeah but is learning how to solve it like actually solving it you know what i mean like <laughs> you want to stumble question. through it more you don't that's like you don't yeah all right like, like if you buy a man a fish just... you teach a man to fish but what if he learns how to fish himself? You know what I mean? Like, exactly. you, know, yeah. you, you can't, can't fish a fish out. man. You can't fish a fish man. That. Way more satisfaction if you put your arm in the lake and just pull out a fish. Number one on the Roper Report, we have details about Xbox's Summer Games Showcase from the Xbox Wire editor and chief, in chief, Will Tuttle. Of course, former uh, friend of mine over at IGN. Well, former co-worker of mine at IGN. I guess he's still technically my friend. I could text him right now. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Kevin, I put up the logo if you want to click on it. Today, we are excited to announce that the Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase will stream on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific. This show will feature amazing titles coming from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and our partners around the world. The Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase will include everything you need to know about the diverse lineup of games coming soon to the Xbox ecosystem, including upcoming releases to Game Pass and Xbox or on Xbox and PC. The Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase will be streamed on a variety of outlets in over 30 languages. You can choose where you want to tune in from YouTube, Twitch, Twitch, oh, there's, I see what they're doing, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, we'll see you Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Of course, if you are an audio listener and can't see it right now, Xbox and Bethesda logo is up for the game showcase. It is in space. It's out in space, Blessing. Oh, like they're kids. Uh, it's like I'm, it's, uh, it's, I'm staring at a field of stars, Greg. Starfield. A field of stars. We have to see Starfield there, right, Bless? Oh, 100%. Yeah, and I'm I'm very excited for the showcase. One, I don't like... Uh, 
they with the Xbox logos for the Xbox game showcases, like I think people often theorize like, oh man, it's in space. Oh man, like it's, it's XYZ thing. They gotta show this. And I think like regardless of whatever they're hinting at, it's very easy to kind of get a get a idea of what they're gonna show because Starfield is slated for this November, right? Like November it is 11th. the biggest November eleventh, it is their biggest game this fall. Like, of course they gotta show show Starfield. I think the thing that's more exciting for me is how are they going to show it? Is it going to be mm. uh, similar mm. to the Fallout 4 showcase back in the day when Bethesda was showing off that game? Where Big it was, old Todd Howard comes out. He sits there for like 30 minutes and walks you through all the minutia yeah. and things that are happening in there. No jokes. Like, yeah. no joke. That's what I want. Like, I want a 30 oh, yeah. to 40 minute Todd Howard takes me through and he's like, it just works. And he shows me how to fly my spaceship to another planet, right? Or he shows me how to like build a crew and he's showing me, like he's showing me all of the cool nitty gritty portions of the world that uh, uh, aspects of the world in the game that I really want to know about, right? Like show me what the story setup is. Show me the characters I'm going to be hanging out with. Show me the uh, gameplay. Show me the combat. Show me the different factions in the world. We've gotten bits of these things over yeah. the months and over the over the last like year or so where they've done the sit down of um the devs going back and forth todd howard but it's usually over concept forth. art yeah and it's, it's yeah. a lot of conversation we haven't seen the game yeah exactly and i think i think that's what we're gonna get i think we're gonna get, get a big deep dive into starfield and i would imagine that that is the 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 main event of this xbox showcase the finale you think or the main thrust of it i Either the finale, but I think if you're going to do the 30 minute to 40 minute thing, I think that would be maybe even like middle to late of the presentation. And maybe you have like a one more thing reveal that is a brand new game that you close things out with. Like, See, this is always the thing where it's so hard to figure out when you're planning these where you put it. I would think you open with it, right? It's the known. I mean, you open with the sizzle reel probably, or maybe you end with this and go to sizzle reel. But it's the known quantity that everybody is expecting to be there. And, and it has to be there, right? Like, you're running out of time. <laughs> November 11th is, is up, will be upon us before you know it. You have to get out there. You have to talk about it. And I think since that, maybe you open with some lighter fare and you put it in the middle, like we're always talking about how we uh, plan PS, I love you, XOXO, recording mm-hmm. today, patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where That's we treat it like a magazine right so you put the topic yeah. the big topic the cover story in the middle and then bookend it with other things that see and that's the way i'm thinking of it where i don't think they open open with it because i do think they want to whip our appetite and like whip. you know throw throw some things in there to get us excited right get us hype i think last time they did this when they did do the fallout 4 reveal we did get doom gameplay for the first time doom. for doom 2016 and that was a hype thing and then they went into fallout i could see a very similar thing where it is all right like the xbox with that's the showcase let's start off with some new xbox reveals or you uh, and we could even see even like some but that's the stuff right like where is wolfenstein 3 and or indiana jones do you have mm-hmm. what its software is working on next there are so many questions regarding what is coming up for but that's the and xbox right and even i guess this is way before the activision stuff so we can count that out i don't think we're going to see that stuff here um but i think even with that there's a lot of unanswered questions and you know i think I think they have enough there where they can start with hype, get into the meat, which is Starfield, and then close with a big surprise. And it's going to be a great showcase for that. Speaking of planning the showcase, big surprises and what's going to be there. We have a show called The Kind of Funny X-Cast, ladies and gentlemen. It is hosted by the one, the only, the master of hype, Snowbike Mike. Snowbike Mike, you're here with us right now. How are you? Good morning, everybody. I heard we're talking Xbox, y'all. You heard correct. Of course, we are talking about the Xbox Summer Games Showcase coming your way June 12, 10 a.m. Pacific. Yes, we'll be reacting to it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, available later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, like all of our stuff. <gasps> but Mike, of course, the Xcast records tomorrow, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, posts Saturday. I'd like to get scratch the surface of I'm sure some of the conversations you're going to have with the one and only Paris Lily and talk about what do you expect to see at this game showcase for Xbox and Bethesda. Yeah, let's jump right into it, Greg. I mean, of course, you and Blessing have kicked it off with Starfield. That will be the big main topic. That will be the kind of meat of it all. And I'm very excited to see what Todd Howard and the team, how they showcase this, how they sell it to us, how we all get excited for this massive space RPG. But then we go down the list, right? And the only other known for sure was Redfall that was announced last year that was slated and dated for this summer, right? But we don't really know what that date was. We don't know where we are this summer. We don't know where that stands. We've seen some early alpha kind of like ripped out photos from the game, in-game photos, but we really don't know where that stands, nor do we know 
uh, all about the game. So Redfall is definitely going to be high on everybody's list of okay. Okay. what is this? Will we get a date? Are you really still projecting it this summer? But then after that, well, we get into. Uh, Mike, let me stop you there. Yeah, what yeah. do you think for Redfall? Like, do you think we actually do see it this summer? You know what, Bless? If they were to hold for this summer with the little that we've seen and known about this, I could see us pulling out a beta blessing. Maybe going, mm. hey, we have a beta available for a week, two weeks. Come out and try this. We're aiming for a later date. I could definitely see the team over at Bethesda possibly showing that off and maybe going that kind of route. Because right now, Bless, it's hard to be like, oh, three months from now, this game could release. Right, that we yeah. haven't seen anything about that, so I'm more on the beta to possible pushback. Especially if you ha if you're not revealing it or re-revealing it until June, right? Like for me, when they said summer, I was thinking, okay, cool, we'll see it in July or we'll see it in August. For a game I think as big as Redfall coming from Arcane being revealed re-revealed in June, yeah, that does feel too soon. But I could, I'm right there with you, Mike. That I think them coming out sit, like showing a new gameplay trailer and then saying there's a beta out either next week or next month. And then it being maybe, it maybe reslated for the fall. I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, of, would it be exciting? Bless if the team came out and they were like, Hey, guess what? It's out now. Yeah, sure. We'd love that. But with as little as we've seen, I don't think that will be the routes that we're all expecting, but uh, we'll keep it going with some more maybes, but some confident stuff that you can definitely expect. Of course, okay. Hellblade okay. two. We saw that at the Ooh, game wait. awards. You best believe Ninja theory will buy most likely be there with more gameplay footage. I think the biggest hope would be, okay, what's the date? Yeah, right, let's 100%. get a firm locked in date. That's what I expect out of Hellblade 2, especially at the big showcase. You think that would be the next one? What After do you predict that, for a date on that? How far out do you think Hellblade 2 is? You know, Greg, I would love to see them really kind of bolster up their second half of the year right now in 2022 because we've had a very quiet start to the year. You look at the second half and – Really, all we have is Starfield. You know, Redfall is not dated, but if it is pushed back to October, whatever, you know, that's only two big games. We'd like a little bit bigger. So Dream would be November, December window. Nice. Reality, probably Q1, 2023, probably February, March in my mind is where you'll see that. Okay, okay. Uh, but, you, right. you know, I, I think that's the right call. It's not my dream, but that's probably what we'll see. Continuing going down, here's some easy ones. Of course, you have Age of Empires 4. They're definitely going to show off more content with that. That has been going very trebuchet. well throughout Season 1. So get ready for more trebuchet content. After that, Deathloop, Ghostwire Tokyo. Those are easy games to say, hey, here's the dates. You know, you've had the exclusivity window. Love to see some dates on when we can expect that. We've had some weird moments, right? You look over on the Final Fantasy side. That's not first party. But, mm -hmm. you know, that was a game that had... Hey, this is exclusive to the other side, but then we never got a date, right? You think of Fall Guys, hey, it's exclusive to the other side, never got a release date, never got a date. So you'd love to see a little more clarity with Deathloop and Ghostwire because those are the easy ones, right? They're but under you're not going to get it. Like I bet, I bet contractually they can't even talk about. You think it so? Till the exclusivity's up, or mm. it's got. I think it's yeah. just got to be up, honestly, before you can talk about it. I, I so would maybe love the you could stretch maybe for Deathloop September 14th, depending mm -hmm. on what their contract was with PlayStation when they did that. I doubt it's up, but I don't think you'll hear anything about Ghostwire yet. Yeah, uh, and then of course we we'll go into the maybes, but let's talk about the big elephant in the room. And that's Halo Infinite. I worry that we will not see any Halo Infinite content of substance <gasps> there because Rezik writes Whoa. into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can to be part of the show and says, Hey guys, Xbox Plus Bethesda showcase is on June 12th. Do you think we'll get any sort of reveal of certain affinities rumored Halo Battle Royale mode? If it's not far enough along for an announcement, it could certainly be a shot in the arm for Infinite. What do you guys think? You're saying no, Mike? So here's the deal on the Halo Infinite news. I think you look to certain affinity to possibly bring the hype. When we look at Halo Infinite as a package as a whole right now, what we talk about, we just got the reveal of Season 2. It's going to release in May here with two new maps, three new modes. There is no story content. There is nothing of that kind of substance. And that's not really what you would want from your big dog here for the first year, right? In the first year, you would like to see a solid season one rollout, maybe hit us with a map one or two for season two in May. But in reality, by you know June, when you have the big show, you would want Halo Infinite to really be hitting its stride, showing off more maps, hitting you with gameplay content, 
But let's be honest, that's not where we're at right now. We know the team over at 343 has talked about priority zero. We know that they are really focusing on getting that team right and finding their footing. They're not quite there yet. So the issue now is, are we really going to go into June without any big Halo stuff? And that would be really sad because it's year one. But we look over at certain affinity. Now, Jez Corden over at Windows Central, friend of the show, has done a really good job at sharing some information that he knows it's been in development, but he doesn't believe it's this year or possibly even next year, right? It's going to be a 2023, 2024 window type thing. This isn't a, oh, this is out next week type situation. So where do you fall on that? Can you tease something that early or do you leave that to at a later date, which I do sure, believe we will sure. see at a later date. I don't think it's time right now. Wow, Mike. Wow. It's a big deal. That's yeah, a big deal. A big deal. I, uh, since you're already breaking so many hearts with this halo information mm. i have to come to you hat in hand and beg you to tell me you think we're getting something of substance for fable fable wow please okay, mike don't do this to me don't do this to me mike. okay i like that you bring up fable because now you get into the big question marks of fable avowed then you look at perfect dark but we know where perfect dark is at currently right now but let's talk about fable Oof. playground games big time title i was leaning on the opposite side i was going to go to turn 10 and try to hit you with some forza motorsport 8 greg miller and try here's to surprise what I'll, here's, what I'll, that here's what i'll do instead. phil spencer says i'm done i'm retiring greg you're in charge take over i go thank you i turn to the forza motorsport franchise both of them just in general mm -hmm. anything labeled mm -hmm. forza and i say we're officially dissolving these teams and you're going to help other people nobody gives a shit about cars anymore it's over all right thank you goodbye it's wow. over goodbye nobody wow. cares Wow. I don't care how wow. many tens you get. Controversial. How many tens you get, how many game of the years you get. An IGN Massive. game of the year for the previous Massive. one. <laughs> you know what I mean? They've been so. wrong before. <laughs> Uncharted 3 review. They'll be wrong again. <laughs> All right. Don't worry about it. Let's let's have a talk about that, you, me, and Bless right now, Greg. Is here we are with Fable, right? We know that the team over at Playground is currently working on that. We've had plenty of conversation on the Xbox side and gamers in general, right? Of do when do you announce the game? Is it too early? Now, all of a sudden, you get caught up in showing off CGI trailers. Can we come back another year and show off another CGI trailer without gameplay where you're going to get antsy? You're going to get upset that you haven't seen gameplay because this game might not be ready enough. So, Greg, blessing my questions to you both are, would you be content with a Fable, you know, CGI trailer number two where we have a little more exploration of the world? You get to maybe see the main character. Would you want that? Or do we need to have gameplay now that it's the second time around? We got to have gameplay. No, you can't come back with this. This is I don't want this, this Fable Vaporware stuff going on. Mm -hmm. if you, next time you show this game, you got to have gameplay. Am I wrong, Bless? No, I agree with that. But I, I, I think that's what you should do. I don't know if that's what they will do. I think looking at previous Xbox game showcase cases, Xbox slash Microsoft, right? Like, I think they operate way more traditionally than you see like a lot of other game companies doing right like you see ubisoft going to ubisoft and i'm talking about specifically for showcases right like ubisoft has ubisoft for nintendo has nintendo direct playstation is doing their own thing right between uh state of play and also doing the playstation showcase that is their big first party stuff a lot of a lot of these big companies are changing in terms of how they go about these big uh presentations and showcases and xbox's showcase reminds me of hey here's an e3 showcase here's you know, we're a big publisher, we're putting everything in there, and you're seeing games from our first party, third party, games being uh, uh, shown from, like, everywhere in the dev process from, like, early on announcement, here's a CGI trailer, to, hey, this thing has gameplay and we're showing it. That said, Fable, I think, has such big cachet that I could see I could see them being like, cool, we, they got to see more. Like, people want to know what's up with Fable. People want to know that this thing isn't on ice and that, like, we are constantly working on it. I could see them putting out a, a CGI trailer. Do I want it? No, I'd rather just have gameplay. Yeah, you go, don't. God damn. JT Savage puts it so well of like, they don't need Fable because they're Starfield gameplay, right? The big dog is Starfield. That's the sure. main focus here. Sure. So could you get away with another Fable CGI trailer knowing that that's not the big next thing? It is Starfield, of course, right? And they might just do that. It might be an opportunity to satiate Greg Miller and say, hey, here's something to at least look at and think about. But I do That's agree with you, I'm not, We've I'm not asking for that. the I'm not asking for the Todd Howard, you know, 30 minutes or whatever on Fable. <laughs> I'm just saying when you do the trailer, rather than just be CG, put a little bit of gameplay in there that we can pick apart and rewind theaters and yeah. see what the game looks like. What does this game uh, look like? 
it, you know, Greg, that's how all the fans on the Xbox side want it. We want gameplay now. We've had enough CGI. And, you know, you know the team knows that well. But some of these teams are not quite there yet. And you start to balance. What's another 12 months? Can those fans mm-hmm. wait for that? Do we need the, uh, you know, the conversation? But let's turn our eyes over to a different team that's been absolutely killing it. And that's Obsidian. Right now, oh, yeah. about on the way. Outer Worlds 2. You know what you could expect as well, Greg? A game that I thought you would really get into. Grounded release 1.0. That could be an easy one right there. An easy one. I did enjoy my, I did enjoy our couple nights with Grounded. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I will say Jez has seen Avowed. Uh, you know, he has talked about Avowed before in many of articles over on Windows Central. So Avowed gameplay could be your next thing. Outer Worlds 2, maybe a little earlier, depending on what they're doing and how they're building that and how big that is. But Which I do believe Avowed would be the easy one. Which of those do you think is coming first between Outer Worlds 2 and Avowed? I know they announced Avowed, Avowed. Avowed first. Avowed will be the first one, I believe. I think Avowed would be the one to go. Unless Outer Worlds 2 is another smaller condensed uh game like we saw with outer worlds one you know what i mean not to say that it was super small but just saying in the scope of things i think avowed is the one that's being worked on that is the first one to come out i forgot wasn't there obviously when all the purchases and acquisitions happened right yeah okay here it is gamer game game rant uh from february 24th uh 2022 dalton cooper fallout new vegas 2 from obsidian reportedly in early talks yeah if you want to talk about fucking making a very interesting subset of nerds like myself go, come unglued, if they just put up, <laughs> if they just did like, you know, the regular, you know, war never changes, Fallout fucking trailer, and they yeah, showed yeah. Obsidian at the end, and then or Obsidian, Bethesda, Fallout New Vegas, like, you know what I mean? Holy shit, that's the kind of announcement I want at E3. I'll or, go crazy. For that. Well, I, I think it's impossible. I don't, I don't, I think <laughs> there's a zero percent chance we'll, we'll see that uh, this year, mainly because I think one, it is the fact that. Obsidian already has so many projects that are already out there uh, between Outer Worlds sure. 2, Grounded, and Avowed. And then also, you have Starfield that is, I think, carrying it for that same fan base that wants that big Starfield, uh, big Bethesda RPG, right? Like, yeah. I think you get Starfield out of the way first, and then it's like, cool. As we're as Bethesda Game Studios is working toward Elder Scrolls 6, let's also put out that, hey, Fallout, Fallout isn't dead. We have uh, Obsidian working on it, and you're going to get New Vegas soon. I just think yeah. Xbox likes to rain announcements on you. Oh, I, I don't put that past yeah. them that they would yeah. be like, also, this is happening. Yeah, all the other things we've said are happening, but this is also happening. It's a ways out, obviously, but I I don't want to keep you guys too long, but there is a number of things I also want to bring Mike, I'm up getting hyped for you. with you and having a great That's, time. Okay. You're bringing the positivity and the Xbox expertise. Don't worry about it. You keep going. Well, Greg Miller, let me get you even more excited. What if my guy Todd Howard came out? with a nice little CGI trailer of Indiana Jones. And we just brought the roof down with some indie. You're interested in that? Because I think for me, I want Wolfenstein 3. You know, Indiana Jones is great. I'm excited about that. But Wolfenstein 3 was actually what I would prefer. I know that has been kind of one of those of like, oh, it was rumored to be there, but now the focus is on indie. I don't think we're actually getting Wolfenstein 3. I would love to have uh, Wolfenstein 3 over that, but... I think Indiana Jones is an easy win, whether that be a title or a quick CGI trailer. It is probably the easiest bet over on that side to show that one off as well. But let's uh, let's keep it going with a couple more fun ones for you, Greg, and Blessing. Of course, let's talk partnerships, third-party oh. partnerships. There are plenty of them. And Mike, you, know, you, know, you know the one I want to hear, though. Is it Contraband by Avalanche? No, it is Hideo Kojima. What, what, oh, what is he wow, working on with yeah. Xbox? Oh, snap. That was my second one on the list. I, I agree, Bless. What mm-hmm. if? You know, I think you've seen the cloud team really bolster, right? We saw Kim Swift join the team. You've heard mm-hmm. the rumors from Jeffy Grub Grub about, hey, what is this going on with Hideo Kojima? How are they going to leverage uh, Azure? What are they going to do with the cloud and his game? Is it too early, Bless? I don't know. You're... You're my Kojima stan, right? You're my dude there. Is it too early to show off a Kojima project or is this the right time for him to just kind of sell you on a dream and then seven years from now we get it? Mike, back in 2015, I believe it was, Metal Gear Solid 5 came out in the fall. A few months later, it was Andrew House who sat down and announced a new partnership with Hideo Kojima to work on an exclusive PlayStation game. And then six months after that, at E3, they officially revealed Death Stranding. I don't think it's ever too early to announce a Kojima project. Okay. I think like. he's like he's proven that, one, he always has an idea that he's ready to, to get started and get off the ground. And then also, I think when you get an announcement of a Kojima project, there's the understanding of the audience that, 
okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see this game in like at least three to four years, right? Like people know that when he when he announces something, that means you're going to wait for it. And the rollout is part of the process. The marketing is part of the process. And I think the earlier you get a Kojima announcement, a Kojima product announced, the quicker the fun starts in terms of, all right, like what is the meta game here? What is he really trying to tease? What's the real name of the game? Like, I think it's very likely that we could see a Kojima project early, uh, sooner than later for an Xbox thing. Big Miller, you've met Kojima. One of my dreams, you know, is <laughs> to have. just give him the eye and let him know how great he is, you know, with one of the little nods. Sure. Do you think that's this is possible? 100%. I, I, I mean, yeah, 100% okay. I think it's possible. And I'd be stoked for it. I'd love to see what he's got up his sleeve and what Xbox would be down to, for him to do. There's... I think they also know that people know, right? I think with Jeff mm. Grubb putting that out there, with, like, the rumors circulating, I think it's better for them to come out earlier uh, and, and actually just put it out there and own that conversation as opposed to wait another year and let the speculation run and let people mm. think about, like, or figure out, like, Ah, uh, shit, all right, it, it seems like there's a cloud thing. All right, we see Kim Swift walking into an office with Kojima. What are they possibly talking about? I think you just get ahead of it and just announce it and own that conversation. There, there's so much when we talk about the partnership side and the third-party projects. Project, of course, Contraband, you see with Avalanche right now. You have Project Dragon with IO Interactive. Where do they stand? You have Project Belfry, this 4X strategy game. I saw someone in the chat bring up the Wu-Tang game that we saw rumored over there, right? There's a lot of these different partnerships that maybe you see come to light. Contraband is definitely high on the list. I think you will see Contraband. We've definitely talked about it. You've seen the title, the splash screen, the CGI trailer, or the mini you know, teaser trailer, but I do think Project Contraband will be there. Just a couple more for you too, of course. You know, when I go down my big list of the ultimate first party Xbox studios, you look at the coalition currently working with the new unreal engine right what are they working on will we see a gears announcement probably a little bit too soon but you never know they were one of the early adopters on this helping that epic team build out what they have of course you look over to what everybody wants to know what the heck is compulsion games making mm -hmm. when are we going to see this project from compulsion games is the big deal because their last game was we happy few then they were taken in by xbox like where do we stand on this right now I say, Mike, is that the question that everybody wants to know? Like, is there hype for whatever Compulsion Games is working on next? Or is it a thing that they have to prove? Because because right now I hear about Compulsion Games and I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot about We Happy Few. I forgot that came out. Like, it seems like that sort of underdelivered for what people expected that to be. It, it's a we have to prove. And it is an mm -hmm. excitement, right? Because when you get all of these, right, you see the banner 15, 23, you see these studios, right? And you look down your list. You look at each one and you say, what is this team making? What cool stuff are they bringing to the table? And whether Contrast or We Happy Few Woo. is up your alley or not, guess what? It's still part of the team and people are excited about that. And it is a little bit of, hey, it's time to prove what you can do, right? Because We Happy Few, some people liked that. Most people really were on the fence about We Happy Few, right? This wasn't a game that broke <laughs> some the people world. Liked it. Some people yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> some people were yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, well, I'm never yeah, playing right. this again, you know? But <laughs> I think this is something where it's like, it is time to prove it. And also, we are excited to see what this talented team is doing. Keeping it going in exile, right? What is this rumored first-person shooter RPG going to be, right? We don't quite know from the team that's made Wasteland 3 and the Wasteland games now all of a sudden the rumor is first person shooter what does that look like you know what i mean i'm surprised i'm surprised that they're not the rumor for fallout new vegas it seems like that would be the perfect fit if they're making this transition you know bless i i, I think just the obsidian name carries so much weight when it comes to rumors that that's mm -hmm. the easy you know one plus two type situation you know what i mean so that's where you go with it but uh it's not a bad idea bless that's a good call out right there you best believe we'll see. Of Mikey, course, Mikey, yeah, I'm going to stop that. Oh, gonna come stop on. You, all right. Craig, we don't need to do anything. You know, Adam stands fun. alone and says, save some, Mike Lowell. Oh. It's true. You do have an X cast coming up, okay, of course, okay. tomorrow. That's you, Paris. Is Gary? I forget Gary's not there, right? We're Gary's out. We're, we're going to get a special guest in here. And I'll leave you with this, Greg Miller. I'll leave with this so I can get ready for the morning show. What if we see the Elite Series 3 controller, baby. That's what I'll leave on. Give me a new controller, everybody, to spend money on. <laughs> That's all you want to do is spend some money. All right, fine. I understand, Mike. Mike, thank you, of course, for all your expert analysis today. We love and appreciate you.
Thanks for letting me talk Xbox, you too. And don't be afraid to go long. You know, take your time. Take your time today. We'll, we'll oh. be doing nothing after this. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> that sounds like somebody who needs time to plan their we show. Me and Greg <laughs> have things to do after this. <laughs> exactly, yes. It's a big day for Blessing Greg as they get ready for PS I Love You. And, of course, tomorrow, x Cast with Mike and the crew. Uh, we have breaking news for you. And, Kevin, I did highlight this one for a link for you. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has been announced. Uh, Infinity Ward has tweeted out Modern Warfare 2 with its new logo. Kevin, if you can click on that and show that. There you oh. go. Does this get you? Does this get you going? I do like this logo. Yeah. It's a good looking logo. I'll give you that. Yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. But that's about it. I, 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 like, we'll see. You know, I, I find it hard to be excited for new premium Call of Duty releases. And I think part, half of that is Activision Blizzard and everything going on over there. But then I think the other half of that is that we've gotten so much Call of Duty. I think at this point, yeah. I'm ready to see what happens when the deal with Microsoft goes through and they join Xbox and, you know, to see if, like, hey, when you start taking years off, is that going to bring more to the game? Is that going to make things more exciting? That's kind of what I'm waiting for, but cool logo. Of course, cool logo. It's out there. We'll have news sh soon. It was what at the one of the sporting events recently, like last, yesterday or Monday, that they were showing it just unannounced. Like they had a thing, and somebody tweeted, one of the athletes tweeted they were playing it. Weird. Kind of funny.com slash wrong to correct me on that very thing. Uh, speaking of a lot, dot coms to go to, let's talk about patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you can write in and be part of the show. You, of course, can be watching it with no ads. You can get it with the post show, but you're not on Patreon right now. So let us tell you about our sponsors. Hey, computer people announced at CES and available now the latest generation of Razer Blades feature all new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs and up to an RTX 3080 Ti featuring a suite of cutting edge features to improve gameplay, including NVIDIA Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex delivers the ultimate competitive advantage, the lowest latency, the best responsiveness. Get the competitive edge you need at sub 25 milliseconds. And I asked the one, the only, the Nitro Rifle. Andy Cortez is that good? And he said, ooh wee, sub 25 milliseconds is great. And I said, that's fantastic. Acquire targets faster, react quicker, and increase aim precision in the most competitive games such as Apex Legends, Fortnite, Call of Duty, and more. Learn more about the Razer Blades powered by NVIDIA GPUs with NVIDIA Reflex technology at Razer. Dot com. When I needed a printer, I turned to Twitter, and so many of you told me Brother was the way to go. For more than a year now, Jen and I have been using our Brother printer for immigration paperwork, baby paperwork, and a million other things. It's been great, but you know what printers need? Ink. And while it used to be a hassle to get ink, Brother's Refresh Easy print subscription has made it easy. The Brother Refresh Easy print subscription service is a printing plan that is based on the number of pages you print. You choose a monthly plan based on your print volume needs, color, black and white, and all print for one monthly cost. And instead of having to remember Remember to buy replacement ink cartridges, your printer does the work for you through an intelligent ink and toner level monitoring feature that tracks the remaining amount of ink or toner and orders it before you run out. The Brother Refresh Easy print subscription service is a convenient, worry-free way to print. Each plan is flexible and you can change or cancel your subscription at any time. So what are you waiting for? Stop running out of ink when you need it most and put your printer to work with the Brother Refresh Easy print subscription service by signing up at brother-usa.com slash print with refresh. Again, that's brother usa.com print with refresh to sign up for the brother refresh easy print subscription service and stop worrying about your ink levels all right guys let's chat skincare if your skincare routine is basically you washing your face in the shower with that one shower gel that you've been using since high school, then it's time to level up your skincare game. Because as it turns out, that regular body wash you've been using that you thought was good enough is probably damaging your skin. But thanks to Lumen, you can drop that bottle of three-in-one and start using products that actually take care of your skin. With Lumen, you get the highest quality products. All their products aim to help with those stubborn acne scars, under eye circles, wrinkles, sun damage, dry skin, oily skin, you name it. It's all there. Starting with Lumen is easy. All you have to do is take a two minute quiz on their website and they'll tell you exactly which routine is best for your skincare needs. Gia has been using the charcoal face wash and charcoal face scrub and she feels so fresh afterward. She has dry skin, so especially during the winter, it's nice to have that hydration and exfoliation. Also, she's a big fan of the really subtle citrus smell. Level up your skincare game with Lumen Skin today. Go to lumenskin.com slash kind of funny to get your free trial of Lumen's products. That's L-U-M-I-N skin.com slash Slash kind of funny for a free trial lumenskin.com over on kind of funny.com slash you're wrong the nanobiologist tells me it was modern warfare 2 was shown to nfl draft prospects it was revealed by ahmed gardner so there you go that's where it was bam 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 um 
Back to your regularly scheduled kind of funny games daily. Uh, number two on the Roper Report, PlayStation is stopping sub stacking. This is Tom Ivan over at VGC. Sony has reportedly disabled PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now subscription stacking ahead of the upcoming revamp of the membership services. A growing number of PS4 and PS5 owners have been unable to extend their memberships over the last few days, and the issue appears to be widespread based on mes messages sent to PlayStation's official support channels and reports from forums, including Reset Era. While PlayStation has yet to officially comment on the matter, a number of affected users claim that they have been informed by Sony customer support representatives that the company has temporarily blocked subscription stacking. Quote, due to upcoming changes with the PlayStation Plus subscription, currently the PS Plus stack, currently the PS Plus stacking is not available as we have removed the ability to do that, one Reset Era user uh, was reportedly told. Quote, we understand how important this is for you, and we'll have answers on how this will work once the new PlayStation Plus membership becomes available. They added, I understand how frustrating this must be. I can only advise you wait until your current subscription is over, then use your code. Extension, extension slash, stack, slash stacking is no longer available. It's believed the move may be the result of Sony attempting to stop players making savings on the revamped PlayStation Plus service, which will begin rolling out in May, structured across three play payment tiers, Essential, Extra, and Premium. Earlier this month, dedicated PlayStation owners bought up years worth of PlayStation Now subscriptions while they were still available to save money on PlayStation Plus Premium. Prior to being pulled from the sale, prior to being pulled from sale in early April, 12-month PS Now subscription cost 60 bucks. So it's previously said that when the new PlayStation uh, Plus service launches, PS Now memberships will be converted to PlayStation Plus Premium, which will cost 120 bucks a year so there you go $60 <laughs> savings and in a recently updated FAQ Sony also confirmed that players who are subscribed to both PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now when the new service launches will be migrated to PlayStation Plus Premium with a new single payment date based on whether the subscription was set to end a PlayStation support email sent to push square sent to a push square reader also seemingly confirmed that membership stacking has now been disabled blessing what a fucking nightmare. Like, oh, how did no one think this through at PlayStation? Uh, a lot of you are surprised that they're doing this. And I'm surprised that it took them this long to do this. Because 100%. I remember talking about this show, uh, uh, talking on the show a few weeks ago about how, hey, yeah, like, it seems like you guys can game the system. And it seems like it's a thing that they probably want you to do because that means that you're buying these memberships anyway. Like, either way, the money's in their pocket, whether or not you're stacking PS Now or stacking PS Plus and trying to get in there so that when it converts, we have longer time. I... I'm not surprised they're shutting it down because they're PlayStation and they're weird. And I think they're realizing that like, cool, you know, we let it slide for a few weeks. Now let's make that money. Like we gave people the chance to game it. Cool. Stop it. We're going to get, we're going to get that, 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 that money for you. But yeah, I am surprised that like, I, I do think it's funny that weirdly, if they, they let it happen for a few weeks and all of a sudden they're like, actually, never mind. Ooh, like, somebody finally was like, shit, fuck, this is really getting us. Yeah. Like, it must have been the a thing lot where of people are doing this. You look at it and you're like, whatever, not that many people do it. And then they're like looking at the numbers and looking at the numbers and like, all right, a lot of people are doing it. Everyone's reporting on it. You have to do this and pull it. And of course, look like a bunch of assholes. Like 100%. Just don't do it. Just why did you even do this to begin with? Like, why did you even once the once the ticket was punched and it was like, cool, this is how it's going to we, we've said it is. You got to just eat it because yeah, now they look like just complete jerks. But. Yeah, a lot of people are, are uh, comparing it to how xbox would do like the, the one dollar thing to get yeah. you an xbox game pass right and like i think the difference there is that xbox is very hungry or at least was very hungry to get people next into xbox game passes and they still are right and like they didn't they didn't pull a move like this but also i think on the playstation side you they already have you right like if you have a playstation you're likely going to get a playstation plus you already probably have playstation plus and i think the extra tiers are for the more hardcore people that are going to buy into that thing and so I mean, it's, it, a, it's a less hungry move. You're, exactly. And you're talking about them being hungry, right? And there's a whole bunch of people that are going, Xbox allows this. Why can't PlayStation let us do it? Uh, Crush Lemons, you can still do this on Xbox. Uh, Nanobiologists, they mm -hmm. still let you stack. Yeah, because they're still hungry. They're st they don't, trust me, they want you subscribed to Xbox Game Pass for as long as possible. They want you to use it. They want you to get in there. PlayStation knows this blessing is saying you'll do it, especially with these tiers and the way they've structured the tiers too, where it's like, me and Gary were talking the other day where Gary's like, I don't know if I'll do the, the premium version. I was like, dude, it's three bucks more. You're going to do the premium version. Like you can't, you, that's why they've priced it the way they've priced it is that you look at it and go, oh, it's not that much for the ultimate thing. And then there'll be one thing I want to play on, you know, uh, PlayStation now or whatever, PS plus PS3 games or streaming or PS2 or PSP yeah. or whatever. Like that's how they get you. It's just a bad look. And again, it's like just such a not thought through move. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we'll do this in not like, okay, but what about this? Ah, it'll never happen. It'll never be big enough to matter. And then it matters. You're like, fuck. All right, well, 
pull the plug and just tell people no now. And then they have, they've bought all these codes and now they're going to be pissed off that they bought these stupid codes that they can't stack and yada, yada, yada. What a nightmare scenario. And when I say nightmare, I mean in the grand scheme of horrible things people have to deal with at companies and PlayStation has to deal with in terms of bad PR. This is not that high on the list. Right now, it's a big thing. Yeah, I'll say, I think like this is bad. This is bad PR for like the hardest of the hardcore. Like this is bad PR for like our audience because our audience actually pays attention. Most people do do not this know is a bad and do not week. care. This is a bad week for PlayStation yeah. PR. They'll be through this in no time and not have to worry about it. Number three on the Rope Report, let's talk Rogue Legacy 2 review roundup. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Rogue Legacy 2 has officially gone into 1.0 release, and so reviews are starting to pop up. However, because it is early, a lot of them are in progress, a lot of not are no official Metacritic for you. And I actually want to start with Game Informers, uh, who recaps what's been going on, right? So this is an in-progress review, don't worry about it, but John Carson opens his review like this. After nearly two years of being playable through early access, Cellar Door Games has fully released Rogue Legacy 2. I've been grinding away at finishing the Rogue Light sequel and haven't bested its toughest challenges yet. But I don't, I'm sorry, and I don't feel comfortable bestowing an official score on it until I do. However, I have poured well over 30 hours into Rogue Legacy 2 and have some thoughts to share about it in the meantime. And so then dot, 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 all the way to the bottom, right? Despite my gripes with the upgrade system, uh, yeah, upgrade system, I've been having fun with Cellar Door's new game and have been consistently surprised by synergies and new room layouts I'm discovering as I near the end of my playthrough. If you like or love Rogue Legacy and have been holding out until early access ended, wait no longer. Rogue Legacy 2 is a bigger and better version of the original's formula and has kept me playing for, quote, one more run, end quote, more times than I'd care to admit. Be sure to check back soon for my full review in the next week or two. Uh, that's where John is over at Game Informer after two years of early access and it finally coming out. However, I do have a couple scores for you over at Destructoid. It has a 9.5 out of 10 from Jordan DeVore. All in all, I found this game to be super satisfying. Some character classes are so enjoyable, I could play a whole separate game, parentheses, not necessarily even a roguelite, uh, with only their base mechanics. All of the other assorted archetypes uh, that I don't typically choose are just icing on the on top. For me, the classic Rogue Legacy roguelike hooks are still potent in the sequel, and the agile combat and platforming feels fantastic. Once you're in, it's hard to walk away. I knew from my limited time with early the early access version that Rogue Legacy 2 would be great, but I don't didn't necessarily think it would go on to become one of my one of the best games of 2022 wow. and one of my favorite roguelike games. The competition is fierce, but it's ready. Then GameSpot.com, home of Tamar Hussein, the current. Uh, uh, up, up, down, down, oh, champion in K- KFW. Uh, gave it a nine. Richard Wakeling writes, all of this makes Rogue Legacy 2 difficult to put down. The one more run effect is in full force as you choose yet another new heir to embark on another perilous journey. The introduction of distinct classes with their own unique weapons is a masterstroke that elevates this sequel by building on what was already a fantastic premise in satisfying road light, Rogue Light Loop. House rules make it more pallid, pap- palatable uh, for a wider audience uh, but also give players an opportunity to ta- tailor the challenge to their liking uh, even if that means increasing the difficulty the breadth of uh, its biomes can sometimes induce backtracking as you search for the path forward but this is a minor blemish on what is a fantastic game sacrificing your family tree has never felt so good blessing i adored the original rogue legacy it is one of those definitive vita games for me uh, in terms of this were you a rogue legacy fan and are these reviews doing anything for you uh, yeah, no, I was I was in the same uh, place as you where I adored it as well. And it was such a great Vita game for me. But I did play a lot of it on PS4 as well when it came out on PS4. And like it was a, a like an early indie game for me uh, in like an era where, you know, early PS4, I think during the PS3 era, I was like playing like a lot of the AAA stuff. But like PS4 was when I started being like, all right, let me check out like this these other games. And I think it, it must have been a PS Plus game or I just got it on sale or something where I saw it. Remember hearing on like IGN podcasts, people talking about Rogue Legacy and, and being like, oh, I should check it out and and getting really addicted. And like that was my first roguelite. It was the thing that like I think would uh, lend to me getting into games like Dead Cells and eventually Hades and eventually Returnal sure. and other sure. similar roguelite type type games. Um, these reviews have me super excited. I think the one my one thing with Rogue Legacy 2 is that, you know, I've never I, I never understood how they were going to follow up on Rogue Legacy 1 because Rogue Legacy 1 felt so perfect to me. So but good. seeing reading these reviews had me excited, right? It seems like uh, uh, GameSpot, uh, Destructoid, right? Like John Carson at Game Informer are all like holding hands and, and this is a worthy experience. Like this is dope. This is refining all the gameplay stuff. And even as I look at gameplay videos of Rogue Legacy 2, 
as I watch, I'm like, this looks like more Rogue Legacy. Like, this looks like a more polished version of Rogue Legacy, especially in terms of graphics and art style. But also, like, that's also I'm also down for that. You know, if it is that, plus um, more classes, more upgrades, like uh, 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 more environments, different bosses to fight, then I'm totally down for that. That sounds like a fantastic time, and it's one that I, it's one that especially coming off of. Uh, I forget w- uh, which one said this. One of the reviews said that like it is one of the best games of 2022. Yeah, that is crazy praise that like has me super excited to check this thing out because that's yeah, what that I want to hear. Jordan Devore over at Destructoid. Ooh, yeah, nine five review. And meanwhile, while we've been live, IGN posted their review. Uh, Mitchell uh, Saltzman gives it a nine point out. So yeah, mm-hmm. this is a, a great one on PC, Xbox. I will be downloading on Xbox ASAP as soon oh, it's as not I... PlayStation is it? No, no, no. What not yet. Say. One day. You know, don't worry. You know, you get to do it all over again. But it's always nice to dust off the old Xbox, put something on it. You know, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, I haven't touched. You know what I mean? Years. Like, God, it, it, yeah. you, you know, those pu- people, they're finally getting uh, bug snacks today. You, you feel bad for the Xbox people. You look over there like, God, what do you was the last do? thing I played on my Xbox? Yakuza like a dragon, maybe? Yeah, Disgusting. There's no reason to get it out there. Go do it. Uh, number f- and then in the chat, uh, Wookie Enforcer says, I'd prefer it on Switch. Hey, brother, your mouth to God's ear. You know what I mean? What I'm talking about right here, PlayStation Vita, I played that thing all the time. I would love that. But of course, with Xbox Play Anywhere in the cloud and all that jazz, right? I should be able to do it. No problem. Remote play, all that jazz. Here's the thing, Greg, right? I was just now thinking like, man, if it's not on PlayStation, we're not going to play it if it comes out on another platform. And I'm not going to eventually pick it back up on PlayStation and start from the beginning. I guess I'll get it on Xbox because that's a console um, and Game Pass. But it just just, uh, occurred to me. A few days ago, I got my email for my Steam Deck. My Steam Deck... Getting delivered within the next week. <laughs> you motherfucker. Every time I'm we talk. I'm going to be playing time... Rogue Legacy on the motherfucking Steam Deck. Well, are you? Because, you know, sometimes they don't. You know, when, when I'm actually... going to maybe possibly play and be yeah, playing yeah, some yeah, Steam yeah, Deck I'm... Rogue Legacy. I'm opening up my Steam account right now. And the... yeah, I still don't have my confirm. I'm still fucking not confirmed. Like, I mean, I, you know, I'm confirmed to have it between April and June. But like, you know. I want it that's so far away i know june's so far away if i wanted something more if only we were there we're not there <laughs> uh number four on the roper report uh this is honestly kind of maybe a required reading but i'll at least give you a bit here so we can talk about it uh balan wonder world director was kicked off the project sued square enix this is michael mcwarder over at polygon uh yuji naka the former head of so- sonic team at sega and the director of the disastrous musical platformer balan wonder world says he was removed from the game's development six months before its completion and that he sued publisher square enix over that decision uh naka said his court case is now over and he's no longer bound by company rules but did not disclose his resolution in a lengthy twitter thread posted thursday uh naka apologized to fans who bought balan wonder world which he described as unfinished according to a translation of naka's comments According to Naka, he was removed as director of Bound Wonder World by the game's producer, head of marketing, head of sound, managing director, and human resources department for two reasons. One issue that caused conflict during development, Naka said, citing court documents, was a promotion that used a YouTuber's piano arrangement of music from, from Bound Wonder World instead of the original composition. Naka said he insisted that the original be released. The second issue was a disagreement with uh, RZS, the game's developer, over the quality of the game. Naka said he made comments to Arzest about improving, I'm sorry, about improvements to Bound Wonder World and bug fixes that were not addressed, leading to a quote unquote ruined relationship with Arzest. Naka further apologized to fans for not interacting with them on social media, saying he was restricted from doing so by Square Enix. He said he believes Square Enix did not value fans or games themselves mm-hmm. based on his experience developing Balan Wonder World yikes blessing what do you take on this one did you get a chance to read through this i didn't get to read the full thing because it was a very long thread but i did skim through it to kind of get the idea of what he was talking about and that is a bummer like that fucking sucks that even he was like yeah man this game isn't like this game isn't shaping up the way it it should be and square enix as a as a response right looking at the game looking at the progress goes we're taking you off and releasing it anyway like we know this game is bad but hey we're putting it out and that falls in line with Square Enix. Like, we've had The Quiet Man before. We've had other games that have come out that have been, like, <laughs> fucking terrible. And they just do not give a fuck. Um, I I got a lot of we've questions about Square Enix. The Quiet Man before. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a lot of questions just about how they operate. Because I feel like there's such a weird, like, every now and then Square Enix will put out a fucking masterpiece. And then sure. they'll put out just a bunch of games that, for them, very much under-deliver. And, like, they, they call it out as under-delivering, right? Like... We all know Avengers, right? But then you go to like, you know, I, I think uh, Hitman failed to to reach expectations for Square Enix. Tomb Raider, right? yeah, the list goes Tomb on. Tomb Raider, yeah. I think Outriders probably did too. Like, I feel like they have a lot of games. That Guardians, come out. did they say that about Guardians this time around? I can't remember. Oh, I think yeah, they must have said that about Guardians. Like, I, it, it seems like that is a trend for them, and it makes me worry for 
what their direction is as a company. It feels like, you know, we t- I talk a lot about on Games Daily about Ubisoft and how, like, I look at Ubisoft's output and I look at the shifts they're trying to make and I get very worried and concerned about, like, hey, you guys are throwing a lot of a lot of shit at the wall and a lot of it isn't sticking. Like, what happened to Hyperscape? What happened to X Defiant? What happened to, like, where is Roller Champions? Where is XYZ thing? Even though I think Roller Champions got a date recently. But it seems I like... I digress. <laughs> I digress. It seems like there's a lot there where it's, like... Are you guys good? Like, do you guys know what you're doing as a company? And I, Square Enix, honestly, I look at them and I think the same thing, but it's a bit more low key because, like, we just don't talk about it as much because we do get the occasional Final Fantasy VII remake and we do sure. get Guardians of the Galaxy. And Guardians of the Galaxy is good, but then you talk to Square Enix and they're like, well, I actually underperformed, right? And we also get the Avengers of the world. And it's like, what's going on? <laughs> like, what is happening at Square Enix? 100%. And so, yeah, it's uh, interesting, you know what the bean counters are and how they match it all up and what goes on. But then you had to have this, uh, your court case is over and now it's time to flame Square Enix. Go get them, UG. You know what I mean? Just get out there and tell the world your story about Battle and Wonder World. Uh, number five and final on the Roper Report. This is one specifically for you and me, Blessing Eddie Oye Jr. The Quarry has 186 endings. This is Wesley LeBlanc, a yes. game informer. <laughs> Supermassive super massive Games' next foray into horror, The Quarry, the studio's spiritual successor to Until Dawn, is due out June 10th. As we creep closer to the release date, more and more information about the title has come to light. Much of that comes by way of IGN, as The Quarry is this month's feature featured IGN first game and in a recent interview with director Bill or I'm sorry Will Biles who also directed Until Dawn it was revealed that the quarry has 186 endings it's quite a lot and it sounds like players will be able to play through the quarry dozens of times without having the same experience here's what Biles had to say in about the 200 endings or developing for that those stories as you those stories, as you kind of branch through, go wide and they start to come back in again. It's kind of like the story itself is the variation, not always just the end. Mm-hmm. We worked out 186 different endings for these characters. Not just alive or dead, but a whole variation of things like what could happen to them. But the stories uh, that can happen are massively varied. Uh, continuing, Biles said that big choices in the game are denoted as path changes. These drastically affect the game's outcome, where, whereas smaller choices simply color the characters you are playing as or change the context in which someone else talks about your characters or how they feel about them. You'll also see a pop-up on the screen that tells you how your actions affect someone. If you're a super massive fan like me and Blessing, the butterfly effect, you're super used to all this different stuff popping up in your games. To manage so many endings, Biles says separating the game's characters in classic Horror fashion makes it much easier because if something happens to someone that's alone, it doesn't affect everyone else, for example. However, he says that killing someone is binary. They're either alive or dead. The choices that don't result in death make the branching of the quarry's narrative so exponential. Bile reveals. I love Are you that. excited? I can't fucking I'm- wait. I'm so excited. Like, I mean, this sounds like what they've done before, but I don't, I, I've never counted the endings in any of the, the other Supermassive games. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that there weren't 186. Uh, that is a crazy number, but also, like, I love that they're talking about, hey, it's not just life or death, right? We are talking about the way characters interact with other characters, the way story progresses. Like, I I, I, I think Supermassive have nailed the uh, what they're going for in terms of the these narrative games that are horror, that are, like, anybody can live or die. Like, I think they've done such a good job of figuring out and like they've had some some bumps right like me and Madonna wasn't great like they've had the the stumbles here and there but i think the more they go the more they identify what actually works and once they start to polish that out that allows them to do more and that allows them to explore like what they can do with narrative what they can do with character and so like the quarry being something that is separate from the dark pictures the anthology has me so excited for it because it makes me think that sc- scope wise this is going to be longer right you are going to have more characters to to, to uh, invest into you're going to have more e- endings and variations all that stuff and it might be an actual return to what we had with until dawn uh, i'm so excited for this can't wait very excited for uh, the quarry obviously we love super massive over here i'm down to stream you Let's do it. Is this one we can play together uh, online? Or, or is it, uh, We've asked this question before. I think we'll it, it, it definitely has like a com slash co- It has co op at least local, and I think it has it has like a movie theater mode. But I forget if it is like Dark Pictures where okay. you each control a different character in different scenes. Kindofunny.com slash you're wrong. While you do that, I will give you one last thing. It's breaking. We'll talk probably more about it on PS I Love You XOXO filming this afternoon. P- uh, Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, Matt Wells at Eurogamer has this one. It looks like the first batch of PS Plus premium tier classic games has leaked on PSN. Uh, jumping into the middle of it, right? It's talking about the fact that right now, granted, there are only three such titles to be found at present, all from publisher Bandai Namco. Tekken 2 and Mr. Driller for PlayStation 1 and Ridge Racer for PSP. But it does suggest that the floodgates are slowly uh, starting to open as publishers move their classic games to get ready for the PlayStation Plus launch. 
So keep your eyes peeled on that. Bless, I can't wait to play all of these games on PlayStation Plus, but the new PlayStation Plus is still so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the Mama Grop shops today, where would I go? You would go to the official list of the upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Do 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 yeah. yeah. Look at these are my Puzzle Quest dice that also came. Now I have dice with Bless. I have all sorts Puzzle of Puzzle Quest dice. is just funding your existence, aren't they? Wow. I mean, they just sent me one packet. I have two pillows too. I put it up on Instagram. Go look at me. Instagram.com slash kind of funny. No game, this no game over game journalist just accepting all these gifts from Puzzle Quest. Listen, motherfucker, I've been in the tank for Puzzle Quest since 2007. Don't worry about what I'm doing now in 2022 with this game. Fucking can't wait. Uh, you know what? I'll you know what? Fuck you. I'll start right there. Where was it? I'm not, it's not even today. While we were live, announced new dates. Puzzle Quest 3 is get on its May 3rd oh, reset, is getting a new class, seasons, and so much more. Go find out about it. I can't wait for it. I'll be playing it. Uh, out today, though. Serious fun football demo is on Steam. Arise, a simple story, is on Switch. Bug Snacks is on Switch, Xbox, and Xbox One for the first time. The Bug Snacks DLC, uh, Big Snacks Island, or whatever they're calling it, is out on the, uh, the other PlayStation and uh, PC uh, platform as well. Cities VR Quest, is out. I'm sorry, Cities VR is on Quest. Uh, Haiku, the robot, is on Mac and PC. Kaiju Wars is on PC. Rico London is on all the Xboxes. Rogue Legacy 2, motherfuckers, is on PC and all the Xboxes. Sea of Craft is on PC. Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is on PlayStation 4. Uh, the House of the Dead remake is on PC, PS4, uh, Stadia, and Xbox One. Trigon Space Story is on PC. Uh, New Game Plus is only the beginning of Techland support for Dying Light 2 Stay Human this week with a double XP weekend kicking off today alongside a contest to win the Pilgrim's Handbook. Man, remember Dying Light 2 when we played that this year and we had a great time with it, but that feels like it was 19 years ago? Yeah. What a game. Exe- except the ending. Executives and gun runners are netting big profits uh, this week in GT Online with a 50% boost in rewards on all special cargo and gun running sell missions, uh, while the latest uh, business discounts are all available for players to get in illicit activities. Uh, new DLC, Golden Japan, is available for Horizon Chase Mobile Edition. Uh, Tasomachi, Behind the Twilight, is now available on Switch and PS4. And then Immortal Life releases today on Steam Early Access. New dates for you. Uh, October 8th through and the 9th, you're getting the Persona Super Live P-Sound Wish 2022 Crossing Journey has been announced. Uh, tune in for two days of music from across the Persona series, including special guest appearances. Streaming tickets go on sale worldwide in early May. Uh, new PlayStation, a new PlayStation Indies trailer has Stray in it, and it says summer for a release date. Something to keep your eye on. Psyonix, the San Diego video game developer, announced that Formula One is coming back to Rocket League with the 2022 Formula One Fan Pass available on all platforms starting May 4th. Remember, if you play Rocket League on any platform, you can use the Epic Creator Code. Kind of funny. Uh, be Funny Now, the competitive party game, is coming out Tuesday, May 17th on Steam, uh, App Store for iOS, and Google Play for Android. Uh, Catalyst Black is launching on PC May 25th. And then once more, just to close it out, Puzzle Quest 3, motherfuckers, May 3rd reset, new character, season's debut. I can't wait. I put up a tweet yesterday, too. If you're still playing Puzzle Quest 3, uh, respond to that tweet, and I'll get you into the uh, Kind of Funny Kingdom, because I'm going to clean that up. Blessing. Greg. Would you like some deals of the day where you could save a buck or two while you play some video games? I would. Uh, we they uh, Amazon has announced the Prime gaming deals for May. Starting in May, you can snag exclusive content for Lost Ark, Lords Mobile, Brawlhalla, Destiny 2, FIFA 22, and Grand Theft Auto Online, and so many more. Uh, the free games for May uh, are six titles, including Dead Space 2, The Curse of Monkey Island, Out of Line, Male Mole plus Express Deliveries, <laughs> Cat Quest, and Shattered Tale of the Forgotten King. And then the Amazon Luna Prime Gaming Channel rotates its new titles to check out for free in May, including... Ghost Runner, Ride 4, Monster Truck Championship, and Metal Slug 3. Bless Keeping up my own, my own deal of the day. Please do, uh, please do. There's a PlayStation sale that's going on. I, I've had Zero Escape, the non games, on my wish list forever, and I've been waiting for it to go on sale. That game is currently on sale for $9, and so you can be like me and purchase that game. Uh, if like you've been curious about playing it for a long time, just like I, I have. Um, we have people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up uh, now biologist says Marvel Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy initially underperformed for Square Enix but it's made up some ground since then uh, he links to an IGN article but that's all we need to know uh, nanobiologist then also talks about the Corey's local multiplayer mode which revolves around a more traditional take on co-op players choose one or more of the consoles and pass the controller around uh, oh in addition the Quarry features online multiplayer mode that allows you to invite up to seven other friends not to not just watch uh your playthrough but also vote on key decisions okay mm. so okay mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Quarup, 
the Quarry Co-op support status available at launch. One local, one local, one online multiplayer mode. Okay. Um, Everybody's talking about the quarry. What they need is a streamer mode, uh, which I wouldn't be surprised if they end up adding that later. Like a mode where it is you let the Twitch audience decide the choices for you. I love when games have that. Sure. Yeah, that's always fun. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what else is always fun? Kind of funny games daily. Of course, we have one day left in the week. That means that tomorrow you will get Blessing and Tim hosting Kind of Funny Games Daily to close out your week and have a good time. Remember, you, of course, can be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. We're writing with your questions, comments, concerns to get the show ad-free. And, of course, to go watch us do the post show right after this. Uh, of course, if you want to sign up right now, you can catch that post show when we post it. But more importantly, you could watch me, Blessing, Janet, and Boss Baby Barry Courtney recording PS I Love You XOXO this afternoon at 1230, just about an hour from now. So we really got to fucking, yeah. I guess one o'clock, well, 1250 is call time. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We got to get going. We got things to do to plan this fucking show. Uh, if you got no books tossed away, though, remember Kind of Funny Games Daily runs you through the nerdy news you need to know about each and every weekday. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get it, please like, subscribe, share, kick in a few bucks if you can. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games right now, Snowbike Mike and Nick Scarpino are about to do the Kind of Funny Morning Show, followed by some House of the Dead remake. But like I said, we have a post show to do. So until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.